What's going on guys? Welcome to another sort of basic shell video. This is going to pick up where I left off in the first two shell videos. I want everybody to be comfortable with moving around on the shell, so if you are, you can skip this video if you're already a sysadmin or you really know what you're doing with Linux. Most tutorials sort of skip around from like, oh, basic shell commands and then like hardcore digging around in the kernel kind of stuff. I know that that's sort of the order I have made these videos in, so if you're tracking these videos in the order I make them, it might seem a little confusing. I apologize, when this course is finished, it will be a nice linear progression from basic to advanced, but I sort of have been just doing videos in stuff that's interesting to me right now and slowly filling in the gaps as I go along. So you'll have to excuse that. But again, this is a basic shell video. I'm trying to number these as well as I can anyway. If you've got better ideas on how I could do that, just let me know, send me a message. This is going to cover just some more commands that you'll need to get comfortable in the shell. Day-to-day -day kind of stuff. You should now have watched the other shell videos, that is, where am I in the file system, how to work with files, etc. But I'm just going to give you some, some more quick sort of stuff that you're going to use every day. Now, I'm connected to a machine, and especially when you log in remotely, you'll get either the message of the day or something else um, as your sort of greeting. So you log in and you get, hey, what's up? It's running this kernel, it's this time, etc., etc. If you ever get a full screen of something and you just want to clear it, clear is the way to do that. You type it in, hit enter, it clears the screen. Simple enough. If you're typing on the shell, typing some stuff, let's say SSH stuff on the shell, this is like some command, and you realized, oh my god, I've forgotten, uh, let's say sudo. You want to go back to the beginning without scrolling wastefully. So instead of using the arrow keys, just do control A to go to the beginning of the line. And then you can do sudo or whatever. Now you want to go back to the end and add some flags. Let's say we're SSHing in on port 443. Why you would want to do that, you can see in the SSH videos. Control E gets you back to the end. So control A, beginning, control E, end. I like to think of this as, well, E for end, and A is the first letter, the beginning of the alphabet. If you have some cool mnemonic for that, leave it in the comments, but uh, I think you guys can handle this. Good. This is obviously in bash, a comment. It comments out and prevents from being executed whatever you put after it. So this will not be evaluated by the shell. Now let's say we're typing in more SSH commands. And at some point, you will have really big and ugly SSH commands. So let's say you're doing like forwarding, let's remove forwarding from like, uh, let's say we want 8080 here, and then some user at, you know, host port 80, blah, 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 maybe on some weird SSH port. This can get really complicated, and these SSH lines can get really long. So one of the things you can do is if you are if you get a command once typed in, and you know it's in your history somewhere, you've done this before, instead of just using up or down to scroll through the bash history, that would be the up key and the down key, or command P for previous, command N for next, this is like navigating in an editor. Instead of doing that, you can simply do control R for reverse history search in bash. So you can just type in SSH and it will find the most recent command I've typed that included the letters SSH. If I type command, I'm saying, ah, that's not it. What's the one before that? Just command R again, command R again, and it will just sort of go backwards through your previous commands. When you find it, just hit enter. Likewise, if you can't find it, you can just hit Control C. Control C is just an interrupt, a keyboard interrupt. It will get you out. Now, three more quick commands: head, tail, and link. Clear. We've got some files here. Let's touch file three, the original, and. Maybe we'll even edit it. Whoops. Oh god, no editors. <laughs> Great. So this is some um, text. If we want to create a link, 
to this file, we could do a symbolic link. And if you do a long listing, you could see these are normal files, directory, and this L here is a link. And this is a link that simply points to file 3 relative to itself. That means you haven't created a duplicate file, you simply are creating a pointer to that file. It's a great way to do things where you want to store something once and then have different people be able to access it, especially once you're working with ACLs or stuff like that for handling permissions for that sort of thing. You will have lots of things that all of your users, let's say, can access. And one of the ways to do that is to give them, you know, if you store that somewhere that isn't normally accessible to them, you can simply give them access, give them permissions for it, and then put a link in, let's say, their, on their desktop or in their home folder. You'll find yourself doing that a lot. And that's basically a way of creating simply another pointer to that file, basically giving it another name that is another place on the file system that points to the same sectors on the disk. Good. Now, if we edit that, you can see it's the original file. And if we edit it from the link and save it, and then cat it out the original, you can see we're working with the same file here. Head will get you by default the first 10 lines of a file. It's in here. That's a long file. That'll get you the first 10 lines. If you want the last 10 lines, we can just do tail. Tail can be really useful just to see the end of a file that's, for example, being written to. I also like tail with dash F. And that will follow the log. So instead of just seeing, like, D message is always going to be a really long log, you've got all your notifications there. And if you want to follow it, you can basically, you see, it's not exiting. Because it's just staying attached to that file. And if anything is added to this log file, I will see it come up here in real time as it's being added. Good. We're going to keyboard interrupt again, clear the screen again, and you could just do control D to close a connection, but since I want to show you how to power off a machine or shut a machine down, um, you've got a couple different ways, shut down, restart, or halt, that is turn it off, and then a time argument, now if you want it to happen immediately, plus some number of minutes, this would be in an hour. So. Shut this machine down in an hour, for example. That's what this means. Or restart it in 30 minutes. If you're just powering a machine off, though, you can just say power off. Uh, you can also say init 0. This has to do with run levels. I know there's a lot of ways to power off uh, or to restart, for example, init 6. Go to run level 6, which is a reboot. But I like to keep it simple. All that hacker stuff is really just... Uh, you know, it's like when I see someone do that at work, it's just they're showing off. And I used to do that at work, and the senior sysadmins looked at me and just said, dude, quit the little the little script kitty bullshit. You can, there's a command for that. You can just do power off. So that's what I tell people now. Power that baby down. All right, kids, I hope that was helpful. So for those of you who are still sort of just getting started, exploring the system, doing the first couple of shell videos, this should just be another step in the direction of more commands under your belt and more of an ability to just move around the system and have the basic things you need to do become intuitive. These commands that I just showed you are useful for obviously reading to files, writing to files. Um, when you're compiling something, you tend to want to like have the software sit somewhere and then just put links in, let's say, user bin or user local bin, wherever you're going to sort of run it from that's on your path. Um, you know, head, tail, I mean, you're going to use tail F all the time for debugging stuff when you're following a log and then doing stuff to try to get stuff written to that log to see what the problem is. 
etc., etc. So these are just basic things that you should add to your repertoire, practice them a couple times, know that they're there. These are sort of the tools that fill those needs. I'll see you in the next video. And I actually have some cool stuff planned for this series, so we'll do some fun things on the command line. See you soon.